Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, however and whenever you're practicing. My name is Nikki Box, and today we are stretching. Before we go any further, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of these secret tools and amazing 30-minute workouts. We'll need a strap, a bolster, one or two blocks, either cork or foam, and a light blanket, something that you can easily have handy and readily available in case you need. Links to all of these products are below. Let's get started. In today's practice, let's go ahead and find a comfortable seat crossing at the ankle bones. If you'd like to sit on a blanket, you're absolutely welcome to do that. We'll go ahead and undulate the spine, leaning forward a little bit, and then rocking back, separating the shoulder blades, lifting the heart, bowing the head, drawing the navel in as you round back, and then coming to a seat. So we'll take this four parts, head down, rounding the back, lifting the heart, rounding forward. You want to feel the spaciousness moving between the shoulder blades, giving yourself a little traction here. A little lift of the pelvic floor as you lift the heart, lengthen forward into a flat back, and then scoop the navel in, rounding the body. Let's take that one more time. Feels really good to undulate the spine here. Then come back to a comfortable seat. We'll switch the crossing of the legs. So if the right leg was forward, you'll switch and have the left and vice versa. And this time we'll go the opposite way. So we'll round the spine. Press the head down. Come to a flat back. Lift the heart up. Round the spine. Head goes down. Lengthen to a flat. Lift the hook. Let's take that three more times on your own. There is never any rush at all with our practice. <laughs> but rather the ability to luxuriate brings a feeling of expansion rather than contraction in our bodies. Let's go ahead and rock our pelvis forward and let's extend that right leg. Draw the left heel close towards you. And we'll focus here on opening the side body one of the things I like to do to take this particular posture is to bring blocks on either side of my body. Notice that my feet are flexed here and I'm gonna reach my left arm up, side bend over. And this gives me a little bit of a prop here as the left arm and left side of the body starts to elongate then I can start to make the adjustments that I need. We wanna focus here on keeping the arms in front of the legs, the feet flexed, and this top arm long by the ear. Notice if you're bending at all. And then close the eyes here, anchor that left sit bone down. 
leaning back. If it feels as if you are pushing or struggling, it's a sign you've gone too far. We want to feel ourselves into the shape we're making, never forcing, never pushing. Take a nice smooth breath here to inhale. Take that top arm, back stroke it away. And then let it come right back up by the ear one more time. Keep anchoring the hip down, back stroke that hand away. Do that again, almost as if you are taking some laps, but we're moving slowly here. We're lengthening the side body. Back stroking it away. Two more times like that. Be generous with the breath here. Right? Sometimes if we are pushing or straining, our breath becomes shortened. And we want to move to a place where the breath is elongated, luxurious, where we're bathing in the breath, not stifling or ready to hop out of the shape. Take your time now. Bring that left arm along by the ear. And then let that left arm guide you up. Drag the right hand. If it's on a block, you can slowly draw the block in. And then we'll trade one leg for the other. Draw that right leg in now. Left leg is going to extend. And that was my hip opening. Block to the inside and outside. And then from here, same thing. We want to peel the toes back. Nice generous bend here. Right arm long by the ear. Lean back. And then this takes time, right? So I'm not going to go to my fullest range. But I'm going to let myself be led and anchored down into that right hip. As a dancer, one of the most important aspects of preservation of our body is being able to work on elongating all of the muscles that we use on a day-to-day -day basis that we don't even think about. Make the adjustments that you might need. You might even take Peace Sign Fingers Yogic Toe Lock here. Again, if you feel strained or if you're labored, if the breath feels like it is running away from you, you've gone too far. And then go ahead and close the eyes. It's not about forcing ourselves into a shape. It's about practicing and loving ourselves into a place where we can have a healthy relationship with our body, with our mind, and preserving the vessel that we live in. Just by simply elongating the breath, that's bringing oxygen to the cells, which adds life. One side of the body is always more user-friendly or open. I mentioned this Almost every class or every practice, I have scoliosis, so this is quite generous on this side for my body and my spine, never going past the point of where I can handle. We'll take that right hand now and backstroke it away. And then reach it long by the ear. Nice, luxurious breath. And then same thing, as you start to feel your body opening up. Give yourself the breath here. And slow the movement down.
never about rushing, but always about where we can maintain with integrity and grace. Let's take this two more times on your own. Close the eyes if it feels good. The next time you bring that right arm long by the ear, pause here for a moment, and then press your left hand down. Let that right hand guide you up. Let your head be heavy, and you're going to feel that sensation of the lats bringing you back. Pause here. Go ahead and shake the head side to side a little bit. We'll draw that left leg back in trading one side out for the other and then we'll re-extend that right leg draw that left heel in close to the midline of your body and one more time we'll let the blocks frame our right leg take a nice big breath your biceps are long by the ears rotate over to that right foot and then draw the arms down there we go and then draw the arms down, pausing when you feel sensation. We want to maintain a neutral spine here, long, elongated back. Now, many times I've seen people use a strap, and we're not going to use the strap today. We'll use this in a, a different way. But I've seen a lot of this happen, holding on, and then the shoulders are rounded, and what happens is this is pulling on the low back. The shoulders are hiking up to the ears. So I want to caution you that if that is something that you're used to doing, to not do that. Right? Our elongation actually starts when the spine is nice and erect. And then from there, we start to move towards the leg. Always maintaining a soft shoulder, spaciousness between the chin and the chest. And the straight back. And then slowly with progression, depending on where your body is giving you feedback, you might be able to start to slowly make your way forward. And close the eyes. Again, a watch pot never boils, right? It's the same thing when our eyes are open. It's almost as if we, we want to feel as if we're getting to a quote-unquote goal or destination, but when we close our eyes, we give ourselves the freedom and the liberty to explore what's happening on the inside and to feel our way. With proper alignment. Some of you, depending on where your body is, might even be able to prop your forehead on a block and let the arms straddle. Again, there's no goal. As with anything in life, practice and all will come. Progression takes time. And you can always come back to this practice at any time. On a daily basis, it definitely helps. Go ahead and scan the body and notice which part of your body might feel like it needs a little bit more compassion, a little less pulling or pushing if that's what you're doing, a little bit more ease, a little bit more surrendering. And slowly draw the hands down to the earth. If the head is on a block, you'll lift it up and 
Take your time as you work your way back up. Again, remember that we want to move slowly when we're stretching. What we do to one side, we usually do to another. So draw that right leg in and trade it for your left. And you want to act as if the left foot, that left big toe, is pressing on a gas pedal. Set your blocks up. And then biceps long by the ears first. Then take the twist over. Elongate the spine here. And as you're ready, bring the arms down. Maintain a neutral spine here. You might shake the head side to side. Forearms to the blocks. Remember that they're three different heights for the block, so this is totally fine. Option one, option two, option three. I'm taking option two. I encourage you to keep lifting out of the low back. Feel a subtle lift of the pelvic floor and then relax the head and the neck and the chest. If it's available to you, you can take this gesture. It's called a mudra, where all the fingertips touch and connect together. It helps to stimulate brain activity. <laughs> And helps to balance the brain, takes us from overthinking to a place of balance. And then close the eyes as the body slowly starts to elongate. You'll begin to feel the large muscle that covers the back, the latissimus dorsi. You'll begin to feel that opening up and lengthening a little bit, as well as your hamstrings, right? So hamstrings, back of the knee, the tendons and the ligaments and the calf muscle, soleus, the gastronemius. And then once again, ask yourself, where can I soften? Where can I soften in my mind? Soften if I'm comparing myself. And the comparison doesn't have to be to me or to someone that you've seen or a version of yourself you've written in, in your mind's eye. You can even be comparing yourself to yourself, right? Can we work towards letting these stories, these narratives that we continue to write for ourselves we let go of that with a little exhalation, a little peace, send it, send it on its way. Strength and flexibility go hand in hand. It's kind of like brain hemispheres accessing only one side leaves us completely imbalanced. And just as the right side needs the left, so does the left need the right. And our ability to stay within the breath and maintain composure without forcing gives us a practice of grace. We'll take one more smooth breath here to inhale. And a generous breath as you exhale, draw the hands underneath you. And slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Take your time here. And very slowly start to draw that left leg in. Take your time. Hold on to the ankle bones. Give the ankle bones a little tight squeeze here. 
greatest range of proprioceptors are in the ankle bones. And they correspond to our awareness within time and space. From here, friends, we're going to take this into a straddle. So here's where we'll need our bolster, our blanket, all of that wonderful stuff. If this feels good for you, depending on where you are, I encourage you to stay there. I actually like to sit on a blanket for this. So you can fold it, light little blanket, and then have a seat on it. This helps to protect the sits bones. And then from here, again, moving very slowly, I like to bring a bolster in front of me. Depending on where you are, have lots of props, lots and lots and lots of props. So with all of our blocks and our props and our bolsters and all of that, we want to continue to roll the thighs back and notice that the feet are flexed. You might stack your blocks. and place your bolster overhead and lightly rest your forehead. So you're not putting a lot of pressure or else that will happen, right? You're lightly resting your head so that way the spine is in a neutral or straight position. Another option for you, again, the outer thighs are rolling back is to give yourself a little block action here. And keeping that neutral or straight spine, you might come to, 45, to forearms, lifting the heart as the thighs roll back. That's a great place to be. If you feel like you need it a little higher, here's where the bolster comes in. It right, gives us a little bit of a ledge here. Once you feel secure with that, and it's kind of like building a little, little Stonehenge table, you might lean forward. And this is a pretty deep and wide stretch for those of you that have a very tight inner groin area, inner thigh area. We want to work with where we are, not work past our edge. Of course, if your practice is a little bit more advanced, keep rolling the thighs back. And you might begin to fold forward and place your forehead. Again, straight spine here. Thighs are rolling back. Close the eyes. Relax the jaw and the tongue. You might bring one cheek to the earth if that feels good, depending on which variation options are there for us to move and progress slowly. And you might switch the cheek to the opposite side. And keep focusing on rolling the outer thighs back. 
and lengthening the spine. As you're ready, bring your forehead, that's if you're all the way down, back to center, neutral spine. And then depending on which variation you're in, you're slowly going to roll up. Take your time. No rush at all. And then draw your legs in towards one another. Come back to easy seats. Sukhasana can sit on a bolster or stay on your blanket if that feels good. And then we'll take our strap. Bring the arms up overhead. We'll just do a few shoulder flosses here. So opening up the arms as wide as you can. Go ahead and shake your head a little bit side to side here. Keep a little bend in the elbows and bring the arms a little bit behind you. Feels really good for the chest and the shoulders. Be mindful here if you are gripping, if you're hardening, and if you need to give yourself a little bit more slack by widening the arms. You might extend them down and around. Bring them back up. And this is called flossing the shoulders. It feels as if we're getting any gunk out that might be making us hard or tight or anything that needs to be rinsed out of the shoulder girdle of the chest, the deltoid area. Take this a few more times. I like to rock my head a little bit side to side. Again, always moving very slowly here. Hips and shoulders. Give us the greatest range of motion, and we always want to respect those joints. Should be feeling really good. And we'll take the strap off to the side. And let's do a little bit of a wrist flex here. So we'll peel the fingers back. This feels really good for the forearms, gets into the palms. For those of you that do a lot of typing, or if your forearms are very tight at the thumb, any carpal tunnel, this feels really good right now. Then we'll flip the fingers down the opposite way. We don't realize how much we use our hands and our forms, our fingers. The motor cortex correlates to the hands and it's 33% in our hands. Let's do the same thing here. We'll flip the palm, right arm up. Heel the fingers back and even extend this thumb as I'm doing. Oh, that feels intense, but intense in a good way. And then same thing. Flip the fingers down. Give yourself a little wrist stretch here. Last thing we'll do is interlace the fingers together and do a little figure eight here. It's bringing a little joint mobility back into the wrists. Switch the crossing of the hands and see if you can go the opposite way. And then release the arms down and around. Let's take a nice big stretch. Reach the arms up. Press the palms down the midline of your body. Pausing at the heart center. 
and just offer up some gratitude to yourself for taking this time to lengthen and stretch your body. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out when I drop another one of these 30-minute practices. Have a super wonderful rest of your day, your evening, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.